Hello, welcome. My name is Simon Pearce and I'm a genealogist for Ancestry and thank you for joining me today. We're going to be analysing newsreels from the Second World War. Now, on Ancestry, we have a fascinating collection called the US United Newsreels, covering 1942 to 46. And they were put together by the Office of War Information in the United States. And of course, you know, they are propaganda newsreels, but they are absolutely fascinating. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what lays in wait and what videos are, are waiting to be analysed. So without further ado, let's, let's get started. Oh, wow. Women workers of Canada hold down the jobs of their men who have been called to war. So interesting. Here in the world's largest munitions plant, Women play such a hugely important role during the Second World War, not, not least you know, in the munitions factories. And this is amazing to see. This is tough, hard work. And the Allies needed bombs, they needed machine gun bullets, they needed materials. And, and women, you know, they played a hugely important role in producing this. This was hard, hard work. And I have nothing but admiration for them. This is amazing. This is all output the Allies needed. I mean, as the war was passing up and after the invasion of Europe in 44, never more so, you know, they needed this material and, you know, Canada, North America, they provided it. Their industrial output was incredible during the war. The factory operates its own kitchens. 1,500 girls are fed in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minute break. That hard work, 15 minute break. Okay, amazing, really interesting. So what we've just seen there is a newsreel covering uh, female munitions workers in Canada during the Second World War. The Allies needed this output, they needed machine guns, they needed bullets, and, and women provided that, that assistance, that, that, those roles. In terms of research, um, if I was trying to find out more about munitions workers, not only go looking in newspapers for perhaps interesting stories, but little records like uh, the Canada voter list. You know, I, I come across references to men and women who were munitions workers in, in, in the war years, um, factory workers. It's worth having a look in the voter lists. Um, if your ancestor married during the war, have a look at the marriage records, because the record record their occupation. Were they munitions workers or factory workers? That's always worth looking at. And we have an amazing collection of UK historical photographs on ancestry. But they don't just cover the UK, they cover the whole of the world, essentially. And there are some brilliant, brilliant photos of um, female munitions workers in Canada absolutely amazing have a look see what you can find and uh, see if you can find any munitions workers in your ancestry d-day wow that armada crossing the sea i mean this is the most iconic part of the second world war in my opinion you see here coming out the landing craft and on some unfavorable ones hmm the sea sickness going over so choppy Landing side at 6.30 a.m. I mean, Canadians landing on Juno Beach and pushing inland to link up with the British. I mean, this was... Just, uh, words kind of escape me. This is incredible to see. Absolutely incredible. Canadians played a massively important part. See there, soldiers falling. It's estimated that about 10,500 killed, wounded and missing. I mean, the, the casualty rate was... They conflict each other about 10,500 killed, wounded and missing. Astonishing. Okay, that's D-Day. That is, you know, the most iconic part of the Second World War in many respects. I mean, many people have heard of it since June 1944. Around about 150,000 Allied personnel crossed the water, crossed the channel and landed in Normandy. And the Canadians, around about 14,000 either landed at Juno Beach or parachuted behind enemy lines. Yeah, if, if you have an ancestor that served at D-Day, then of course you're going to want to get their service record. If they survived, you can apply via Library and Archives Canada. If they sadly were killed, then you can see them in the deceased service personnel uh, collection on Ancestry. You know, have a look at where they were serving, the unit they were with. I mean, the war diaries are going to tell you what they what they were up to, what their unit was doing, um, what they were doing when they landed. That will be really, really interesting. If your ancestors served with a British unit, we have the, the, the British Army uh, D-Day uh, war diaries for the opening days and uh, accompanying photographs, which are absolutely fascinating. I, mean, I can't stress enough, war diaries are going to give you the, the insight that you want. They're going to tell you what your ancestor was doing on a certain day, what their unit was experiencing, the fighting, the weather, where they were stationed. I mean, that'll bring the uh, D-Day to life. Of course, we have casualty records. Of course, newspapers are going to, go, going to tell you a lot more. Yeah, it's the war diaries and the service records that I think are going to bring D-Day to life. Fascinating, see what you can find, see what you can learn about this amazing period of history and, about your Canadian ancestors that perhaps served at D-Day. Wow, ferry command. Interesting. Production of aircraft to be taken to the UK. 
United States I mean, Army pilots turn the ships over to a Royal Air Force crew. I mean, industrially, North America provides so much. Yeah, it's not the least an aircraft. I mean, these are going to be transported across across the skies and instead of the seas where it was far safe. Well, safer to an extent, but wow, what an amazing operation. Aircraft production and, and, and flight have improved so much since the First World War, but it's was still so dangerous. The sound of that engine. Wow. Okay, so what we've seen there is Ferry Command. Really interesting aspect of the Second World War. If you haven't heard of it before or read about it, do a little bit of research. It's really, really interesting. To so build these aircraft, take them to the East Coast, disassemble them, box them up, take them to the UK via sea, then reassemble them. It was time consuming. So men and women of Ferry Command help to uh, ship them or ferry them um, from wherever in North America to the East Coast and then fly them, fly them from the East Coast via, or, or Canada, via uh, Newfoundland to Scotland. And then they will be distributed where necessary. It was amazing. Uh, initially a civilian operation, um, headquarters in Montreal, then taken over by the RAF. If you think you're asked to serve with the uh, ferry command, have a look in um, casualty records because of course, it was dangerous work. Um, people did die um, it, taking off, um, crashed at sea. Very, very dangerous work. So we have the Commonwealth War Graves Commission registers on ancestry. Of course, if, uh, we have the deceased personnel service files for Canadian servicemen and women on ancestry too. If they survived, very command. If they carried on serving, have a look at Library and Archives Canada. If they served with the Royal Canadian Air Force or the RAF, the UK. Um, Ministry of Defence will have the records, look at their squadrons, maybe they'll have operations books at the LAC or at the National Archives in the UK. Newspapers often reference Ferry Command, as do the um, uh, voter list, which fascinates me. But another aspect that I think is really interesting is have a look at the um, yearbooks, the school or high school, university yearbooks we have on Ancestry. They're really interesting. You quite often see references to military service or those that passed out uh, of um, the military academies. Really, really interesting collection. So another fascinating aspect of Canada and the Second World War, and uh, it's been really interesting. Let's see what else we have in, in store. Uh, v Day celebrations, some Force Cathedral there that damaged but not destroyed during the Blitz. Another symbol for defiance. Incredible. Most people. The war in Europe has ended. Amazing. Must have been just an absolute relief for the population. People that served, people that lost loved ones, friends, family. Incredible. Look at the numbers of people there. I walk down those streets regularly. There's people everywhere. Incredible. It must have just been a relief, an absolute outpouring of relief, grief. I mean, that's. Wow. American soldiers. Remember that unity which won us victory, which, with our continued labor, will win for peace and freedom the years to come. So that's the newsreel there, um, V Day, 8th of May, 1945. But so you, you see the newsreel there, the amount of people that poured into the streets, that was, you know, London alone, it would have been going on all over the world. I mean, I mean, if you do have ancestors or, or family members that were alive during during the day, and speak to them, see, see what they experienced, how they felt, if they want to talk about it, it's a really great way of learning firsthand. You look at photographs, you have the UK historical prints collection that's really interesting. We have um, newspapers, I mean, they'll carry some amazing headlines. Really, really interesting. Worth bearing in mind, however, the war was still going on. The war in the Far East was not over, not over until August 1945. There was still war to be won, and it, it's, you know, it's amazing outpour of relief here, but for those serving in the Far East, those stationed in India, for example, there was still a war to be done for them. And so, yeah, a lot to delve into there. Really fascinating, really, really interesting end to the war in Europe there. Well, that was absolutely fascinating. So interesting to see the footage from all different aspects of the Second World War. Please do have a look at the collection on Ancestry. It's the US United Newsreels covering 1942-46. You can look it up in our card catalogue. You know, military records for all different nations in the Second World War, covering many different aspects. So have a look, see what you can find, see if you can learn a little bit more about your military ancestors. And until we see you again, goodbye.